Hey guys, Character 97 again. This time a review of the 100 scale Gundam F90-2 from the Gundam F91 model kit series, later adopted into a manga, then into a game. So first of all, you might notice that this is pretty much a remold of the standard F90. In fact, the only runner that is different is the system injection one. And that means that you have multiple colors molded onto one part. So you have the leg here in white, but you also have the yellow pieces molded directly onto it. Same goes for the body. It's in blue, but it also has the red on there and the yellow. Then we have the face with the chin already molded on there. And we have the V fin, which is yellow and white with a blue sticker on there. And those are all the parts that are different about the base model. You also have the shoulder, the, well, the cover for the hard point there, which also has some extra thrusters. So other than those parts, it's identical to the normal F90. Even the back of the heads are identical. So it's just the front that's different. Other than that, identical build. So for the colors we're getting, we have white, standard Gundam colors. Actually, we have white, we have some red going on. We have the usual dark blue, which is mainly for the body, the shoulders, and then, well, part on here. And that's pretty much it. You still have the usual gray uh, for the joints, the hands, and some of the accessories. And that is the lot you're getting. Topped off with one special one. Very nice clear blue for the beam savers and for the eyes. Moving on to stickers. And let's keep going on with the eyes. Unfortunately, we do not get any eye stickers, but you can just trace around. Um, you can just trace around them with your Gundam marker. And here is a tip, uh, the same one I've given with the other F90s. Now, in uh, the F9, in the Silver Formula F91 uh, model series, they have a specific sticker that you have to put behind the eyes, and that is because the back of these stickers. Off you come is metallic as you will see in a second so then it gives it more of a shine and really gives it more of a three-dimensional feel like there's actually some substance behind the eyes rather than just a hollow piece of plastic so that is something I definitely recommend doing and as you can see we're getting quite a lot of stickers not as much as some of the other models but still a significant amount so for the base model, we're getting the black one here and here, the gray one here and there. We have the gray and yellow one here, here, yellow one here and here. So yeah, that's actually a yellow and black one, though you probably don't see the yellow that well because, you know, it's a yellow piece. Don't know why they want us to put a yellow sticker on a yellow piece, but I guess it makes it easier to align um, the black thing there. So then we have a yellow and black sticker there, we have a sticker that goes on to the V-fin. Moving to the back, yellow sticker here, more yellow there. On the side, we have a yellow one here, here, and then all of these yellow and black ones in the thrusters are stickers as well. We have a gray one here on the color, and then finally, we have a yellow and black one that goes in here, and a yellow and black one that goes in there. And just as with the F90s, uh, for some reason, well, I guess they, because this entire thing is supposed to be gray, they thought they would just give that illusion by giving us a tiny gray border around these stickers. So what I recommend doing is just cut off the border and put that sticker in there. It looks much, much better. Now, for the other stickers, I'll get in detail when we get to the option pack. But for now, let's have a quick look at the shields here. And at first, Side. This might look very similar to the other shield, but stickers are slightly different in terms of coloration. They're pretty much identical, but this one is slightly lighter. Even though the actual plastic, as you can see, is the same color. So it's really kind of weird to decide to go with a lighter tone here, or maybe it's better to say with a darker tone here, because this is actually darker than the model, and this is slightly lighter it's like they just couldn't get the color quite right other than that the stickers are the same we have one massive one going on here with the 90 only available on this sticker so if you want to put a 90 on there you're either going to have to cut this out or 
well, bring your own stickers. Then we have a slightly smaller one on here, a really small one there, and then a slightly bigger one again over there. Once again, this triangle here only available on this giant ass sticker, so you're gonna have to cut that out yourself, and a black one here to cover up the vents. Let's put this slab to the side, and let's look at the articulation of this machine. So, the head goes up, down, rotates around, the arm rotates around as well, it goes up about that far, slightly further when you put the arm. Yes, the typical problem of the F90 is the arm comes off all the time, and that's something you're gonna see a lot in this review. So, it turns around, and bends not quite 90 degrees, hand is on a ball joint, will wiggle around, turn around, and do everything a ball joint does. Oh, and I totally forgot about these stickers for the hand covers. Then waist, very easy, no articulation whatsoever at all. Then front skirts go up individually about that far. You could stretch it a bit further, but then it's just gonna fling off, go out about that far and backwards almost as far as they go forward so yeah then they will also rotate around slightly on those ball joints bent at the knees at one joint but yeah you're not really getting a lot there then one fun joint don't really see a lot is they can also go side to side which can actually be kind of fun with some action poses I'm just gonna put that to the side <clears throat> so as I was saying this can actually be pretty interesting for some action poses then the feet go forward not quite as much but backwards significantly will go side to side and turn around a bit once again, pieces falling off is not uncommon with this machine. Now then, let's look at the accessories. First of all, I've already shown the shield, and it's really not that great of a thing. You can put it into the hand, and the best way to really hold it is, you know, kind of put it on the ground like that. Otherwise, that handle yeah, just not gonna cut it. And one thing you might be wondering is, hey, there's a peg on there. There's a hole in there. Nope, not gonna fit. Cause who would, which silly fool would want to put a shield on his arm? Like, who would want to hardwire that there? No, this peg is for the back. Cause I have to remove this and then you can store the shield there because you know it's a good idea to have the shield perfectly on your back but very floppy on your hand whatever let's forget about the shield and let's look at something much better can remove this hand and then we bring in the standard beam rifle same thing as always like I said it's an exact remold this is the same beam rifle we're getting with the normal F90s, but it's still as great as ever. I really like the way this beam rifle looks, nicely detailed, unfortunately no moving handle that would have been really awesome, but hey, it's in the hand pretty solid, and it's overall a fantastic thing. Though, the sticker here really doesn't want to stay on at all, so painting might be a good idea. Let's put it on the arm and hope it won't fall off. So there we go. Then here he is with all of the necessary hard points revealed. And I have to say one thing, it's really quite unfortunate that you have to remove these extra thrusts that go on his shoulders, because I personally really like them. Just give him that extra performance boost that we now have to remove in order for fortunately something really badass to be mounted on there. First of all, let's see what they replace the shoulders with. And we get this, um, Kind of looks like an extra sensor, and it makes sense, a, an extra sensor for the big gun. We have some interesting movable wings here. Uh, blue sticker there. Put it on there. There we go. And just make them a bit more dramatic. There we go. On the 
underarm, we actually get this thing. Now, at first, it might look like just a weird slab of plastic, but that is the new beam saber holder. Because the old backpack is going to be covered up so that the beam sabers have to be stored somewhere else. Then we get an extra ammo pack that mounts right on here or on the other side, of course. Unfortunately, we only get, well, we get two of them, but one has to go on the gun. Then we have some missiles for on his arms, because of course we always need more firepower. And compared to some of the other missiles I've seen uh, from the F-90 line, these are pretty small. And that's saying something about the F-90 line. But there we go. Then we always need more ammo. We get two of those ammo packs to go onto the legs. And they each have one white sticker right on there. There we go. Then an extra backpack um, once again has an extra kind of sensor thing going on. And it is on a hinge to kind of move around. Not really for any purpose, but it can do it. And then we simply latch this on there. There we go. So I guess there's really no point in removing the beam saver there other than to, I don't know, we could have four beam savers up there, but yeah, it's kind of weird why they didn't just keep them there and give us another sensor up here. So yeah, uh, you might want to keep the thruster there for extra evasion to the left. His left. So then moving on with finally the big thing that we're getting. This right here. And isn't this a beauty? Just look at it. It's almost twice the size of it. Just look at the barrel. And just the barrel is longer than the mobile suit itself, so that is really something. I mean, this is a really cool looking thing. Also some mobility. These flaps here go up and down and splits in two for easier storage. And also we only get one trigger finger and this is the same one from the beam rifle. So it kind of stores like Almost, come on. It stores like this. So it's not the best storage. I mean, it would have been much better if the handle actually completely collapsed and then it was completely closed. But I guess this was kind of a limit they were working with. So then this goes in the back. Here, pegs on there. And then that one closes like that. So yeah, it is gonna take up some space on your shelf, because yeah, you have a quite big barrel there sticking out like a sore thumb. But of course, you don't want a big gun like that sitting in storage, so let's bring it out. Let's see if we can do it like this. Yes, it's actually deploying there we bloody arm come on work with me and don't fall off preferably in it goes and there we go and it actually stayed together now one thing i have to mention is that it's not as easy to really move this thing around. Now, it is technically on a ball joint here and then on another ball joint up there, so it should technically have a lot of mobility and a lot of poseability, but the problem is the arms aren't that poseable, so you can kind of move it in and out and up about this far, and then you're gonna have to fim ground with it so you can hold it level but then when you want to like push it further down or something so it's not as mobile you can point it at stuff but don't expect to do some really dramatic poses uh, posing this thing all over the place but 
it's um, adequately poseable and it's definitely an amazing looking weapon. And finally the things that we're also getting, the usual beam savers, I've already shown them, go into the hands pretty well. And let's put it like this, the beam savers fit into the hands a lot better than the arms um, fit in there. And since it's a remold, we also have one extra spare piece. And this is actually, yeah, you know, the, um, the back of the F90 in red. So it's kind of unusable. Just putting that to the side there. And there we go. Those are all the accessories we're getting. Now, as I've mentioned, this is um, the exact same thing pretty much as the F90. So you can also put all of this stuff onto the F90 or all of the F90 stuff on the F90-2 because the hard points are literally identical. The parts, well, the parts of the hard points, identical. But that also means that we can put those accessories onto these few machines here. As expected, it is a perfect fit on the cluster Gundam, mainly because None of the importance of this time is on the back because you can't connect everything to it except for the unit that would go in the back because there's no peg on there. But this time it's only a sensor on this pack so the gun mounts perfectly there. The one thing that has to be mentioned is that the cluster Gundam, well the cluster Gundam's backpack kind of clashes with the gun emplacement so he always has to be a bit sideways. He can't uh, really straighten uh, it out here because the gun collides with the backpack. So if you put him a bit sideways like this, absolutely perfect. Also, the hard point, well, the hard point cover on the shoulder also goes perfectly on the cluster gun on shoulder. With the gun blaster, on the other hand, things are slightly more complicated. Overall, it will work as you can see, but you will have to do a few things. First of all, the least uh, troublesome one is I turned around the ammo pack here because, well, the hard points are slightly higher of the legs and this just looks better. Then, second of all, if you're planning to really use this set for the gun blaster dedicatedly, then it's a good idea to clip off the... It's a good idea to clip off the top peg because the gun blaster unfortunately only has a hole for the bottom peg so this thing is just gonna get in the way and it will prevent it from really being a solid fit it will fit as is but it's just going to look really really weird and then finally the big cannon itself you might notice something it's upside down because if you mount it normally around once again the hard points on the gun ease on the gun blaster are slightly slightly higher and that would mean that the cannon was literally underneath his armpit it was literally in his armpit and that meant that his um, wings here on the back had to be all the way up looking quite just looking wrong and on top of that, he wasn't able to grab on to the, um, to the handle anyways because it was just way too close and his arms don't have the kind of articulation in order to grab on to that. Now, he won't be able to grab on to the handle there either, but at the very least, it looks like it should be like that. And let's just pretend that the handle isn't there and that the gun is fire linked and there we go. So... A slightly less fantastic fit than the Cluster Gundam, but overall it works and that is what's important. And here's the F90-2 again with the long range equipment. For a few final things I forgot to mention. There is a handle on this thing and it's actually long enough for the other arm, for the other hand to grab onto it. It's well, I don't know, it looks a bit awkward, kind of like that handle that the Gatling gun of the Heavy Arms has. It's nice that it's there, I guess, but overall, it just looks much better if you just take that handle, collapse it, collapse it, and then just, if you really want to give that hand something to do, give it like a beam saber or something, just give it something else. 
or just remove it because the arm once again fell off. Whatever. So then, um, the real final thing I have to mention about this is, of course, the stickers. And everything that is not gun metal gray is a sticker. You have one on here and one on the other side. This one here is white. That one there is a white sticker. That is a white sticker. That is a white sticker. That. And everything is just a sticker. All the white you see. And these here are actually two different stickers that wrap around. Those are two stickers to wrap around the whole thing. So yeah, quite sticker heavy. Painting is definitely something you'd want to do if you want to make all of the long range equipment look really fantastic. And yes, the stickers do have a bad habit of peeling off, just like a lot. Well, not maybe a lot, just like almost all the stickers from this era that are on very sharp surfaces. As always, the inevitable question is, do you want to buy this? Well, for 1,500 yen, it's not a bad package, not fantastic, not horrible, it's it's pretty okay. Now, as with all the other F90 models, the base model is what you'd expect from the time, from 91. It's The articulation is... the color separation is pretty good, system injection molding is pretty novel, to put it like that, back in the time it was one of the first ones to use it so and that's overall pretty nice but what really sets it apart this time is the long range type equipment that gun is awesome and what makes it even better is you can give it to the other F90s you can give it to the cluster Gundam you can give it to them to the gun blaster you can even make the hardy gun night ray type or oh, well part of it and uh, so you can do a lot of badass stuff with the equipment you're getting because personally i don't think that the f90-2 looks quite as nice as the original f90 because like, i don't know the f90 just has something uh just a bit more than the f90-2 can't really say what it is but it just feels that way so overall for 1500 yen if you're willing to do a bit of painting, I think you could definitely make this thing look really cool. And if you're into kit bashing, you can probably do a hell of a lot with this. Because this is really one of the coolest cannons I have seen ever. Though the only unfortunate thing I have to say about the cannon is that folding it up doesn't really work as well as it should. I mean, they, this really should have collapsed in all the way to make it fold better. But hey, that's just a bit nitpicky. Overall, the weapon pack is awesome the model kit is what you would expect from the time and well for the base model have to put it like it is at the time you definitely had better options out there like the rxf 91 very easy to remember the name for some reason and of course the one i always like to compare it to the hardy gun for 1000 yen that's definitely you could almost say a better deal and this for 1400 yen you can see that it definitely has something going for it compared to, for example, the RXF91. This is a great deal for 1,500 yen compared to the Hardy gun. Well, we go into that road again. Then for some more size comparisons, here he is next to some more of his F90 brethren. And as I've said, the f 90s for some reason, just look a bit nicer. So you might want to give this equipment, like I've said, to one of the F90s to make it look extra awesome. Then here is next to the F91. Oh, and of course, one comparison we have to make with these machines is it's not the biggest machine out there. As you can see, the Monster Grade Jim Kai is significantly bigger, and the Unicorn Destroy Mode High Grade is actually bigger. Head height, of course. Uh, this time we have this sensor here that makes the F90 model kit bigger. So yeah, he has to resort to an external sensor which goes up quite high in order to be bigger than a high grade. That's the size we're talking about here. But overall, as I've said, if you like the looks of this thing, it's definitely going to be a pretty damn nice machine. That gun, well that cannon, is simply awesome. And that's all for this review, and see you guys next time.